Haas have finally confirmed that Mick Schumacher will not drive for the team in 2023, and Nico Hülkenberg will be taking his place. Hülkenberg will bring experience to the team and the skills necessary to develop the car and improve the team overall. Nico is known to be a spiky character, but he has come to the defense of Mick after the German driver's crash in Abu Dhabi. So, what did Nico Hülkenberg have to say about Latifi and Schumacher's collision at the Yas Marina circuit? And what will he bring to the team next year? Let's check it out. Mick Schumacher's final race for Haas was pretty much everything we've come to expect from the young German driver. He wasn't able to convert his good qualifying performance into a points finish, and in his frustration, he rear-ended Nicholas Latifi while the two battled for 16th position on lap 39 of the race. As far as driver-on-driver -driver contact goes, it was about as innocuous as you can get. Just a small tap to the Williams driver's back end, but it was enough to spin them both out and put Latifi into the barriers on what was probably the Canadian's last ever Formula 1 race. Latifi would have to retire because of the damage to his car, while Mick continued on to finish 16th even after a 5-second penalty. The collision between the two was almost comical, and Nico Hülkenberg said after the race that he thought Latifi should have taken some of the blame for the crash. You also have to say that the Gotifi, which is Latifi's nickname, also drives a strange line at the entrance, he told Service TV. Drives very far and then pulls in, and I don't think Mick really wanted it. It was somehow funny. It can happen, but now there are no more teeth breaking out of the crown or changing anything. Despite Latifi taking a weird line and generally being unpredictable at times, not in a good way I should add, Mick should have been able to avoid the crash. He got two penalty points on his super license for causing the accident as well. Considering he isn't driving in Formula 1 next year, though, he probably doesn't have to be too worried about those. Mick tried to make excuses for causing the accident by claiming he couldn't see how close he was to Latifi. I mean, in general, these cars are very… you don't really have a great overview of what's happening around, he said. I mean the car, the tires are super high, and that steering wheel in your face, so to speak. I think he misbraked a bit and went a long way, and then got back on track which I wasn't expecting. I just didn't see him. It was so frustrating. Not the best race. Like Mick said, it wasn't the best race, but it hasn't been the best season for him either. He topped last year's F1 Destructors Championship, a fan-run championship that tracks the cost of damage drivers do to their cars, and this year he's topped it again, doing the best part of $5 million worth of damage each season. Many people will be sad to see Mick leave the grid, but for Haas, they'll be glad they don't have to fork out for his mistakes anymore. Before we talk about his replacement, let me tell you about Established Titles, an incredible company that's preserving the natural woodlands of Scotland and helping with global reforestation. This amazing last-minute gift makes you the owner of one square foot of land in Eddleston, Scotland, and Established Titles plants a tree with the global charities, One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. That's great, but this gift offers even more. There is an old Scottish tradition of calling landowners lairds, which is lord or lady to those of you who don't live in 15th century Scotland. By gifting someone land in Scotland, you give them the right to call themselves a lord or lady, and they get a certificate to prove it. You can add lord or lady to your credit card, plane tickets, or even your FIA super license. You do have one, don't you? The first 200 people who purchase a title pack using our link will get their plot pretty much directly next to mine. This isn't just an amazing last-minute gift. We could also start our own little Scottish kingdom. Established Titles is actually running a massive Black Friday sale right now. Plus, if you use the code F1REVERSE, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com forward slash F1REVERSE to get your gifts now and help support the channel. If you bought an Established Titles product with our code, let us know in the comments down below so we can shout you out by your proper title. So, Mick won't have a starting seat on the grid in 2023. He has been linked with a reserve role at Mercedes, but until we get an official announcement, we're going to assume he won't be in the paddock. Now though, let's talk about his replacement, Nico Hülkenberg. Many of you will remember the 2017 Hungarian Grand Prix and the now legendary post-race interview where Nico calls his new teammate Kevin Magnussen the most unsporting driver on the grid. To which Kevin responds, suck my balls mate. Kevin had forced him off track earlier in the race, and though a lot has been made of the two's relationship in the past, that was a long time ago, and we're sure everything has been put to bed by now. Hülkenberg has been given a chance to revive a career that lasted for nine seasons, and is most notable for being the longest in F1 history for a driver who's not scored a podium finish. 
and for taking pole position for uncompetitive Williams in Brazil in its debut season in 2010. I'm very happy to move into a full-time race seat with Haas F1 team in 2023. I feel like I never really left Formula 1, he said. I'm excited to have the opportunity to do what I love the most again, and want to thank Gene Haas and Gunther Steiner for their trust. We have work ahead of us to be able to compete with all the other teams in the midfield, and I cannot wait to join that battle again. Hulkenberg is regarded as a highly talented driver, for whom strong results have never quite materialized, quite often because of his own errors. He crashed out of the 2012 Brazilian Grand Prix when disputing the lead with Lewis Hamilton's McLaren, and potential podiums for Renault escaped him after mistakes in Azerbaijan in 2017 and Germany in 2019. He may not have had the career that he hoped during his first stint in the sport, but Haas have gone for him for reasons apart from his point-scoring potential. Obviously, championship points are what everyone races for, but Hulkenberg can offer more than that to Haas. His experience will be invaluable to the team as they look forward to the first ever year they'll be able to spend up to the budget cap. The team have had to be famously frugal in the past, the photo shoot for supermarket chain Lidl's catalogue being a perfect example of this. In fact, Mick got his seat on the team for this reason. It was the money Mick could bring and the fact he was a Ferrari Academy driver that convinced Haas to go with him in 2021. Since then, he's been dropped by Ferrari, with Mattia Binotto saying he hasn't been impressed with his time at Haas. With Haas securing new big money sponsors, they'll finally feel they have the money to develop the car at a rate similar to that of the rest of the bottom half of the table, something they've never previously been able to do. That money needs to be well spent though, and with experienced drivers like Magnussen and Hülkenberg, they'll be able to do that. What they don't want to do is waste another $5 million on Mick's repair bill. Gunther Steiner says Haas need a driver who can carry the team, not one they have to carry. Steiner believes that in the former Renault man, he has a driver who can carry the team, rather than need to be carried. We are the youngest team and the last two years we lost a little bit of our momentum, you know, when the pandemic came and so on, Steiner explained on the F1 show. So it's how can we bring the team back where we want to be, like in 18 and maybe 19, which was better than the last two years. You know Mick did a good job, but we need to carry him, and we need somebody to carry us a little bit. Steiner is of course referring to Mick's junior status in the sport and his lack of knowledge in car development and setup. Steiner continued by saying, We waited a long time because it wasn't clear that decision, and we wanted to make sure that next year we don't regret that we make a quick decision and the market our way. Nobody really picked it up, so we wait a little bit longer than you do normally. But I think this is the moment, the best we can do for the team to move up again to where we really want to be. If Haas can propel themselves back into the midfield with Hülkenberg in the next year or two, then Haas's critics will be proved wrong. Hülkenberg himself said that Haas gave Mick plenty of opportunities to save his seat and that he had to wait until the very end of the season to finally learn his fate. The 35-year-old, who's been without a full-time race seat since 2019, says he began serious talks with the American team during the summer break. After that, it was bit by bit. After the summer, Mick then suddenly performed better and was given more time, and it all took longer and longer, said the German. Nico was quite optimistic all along, but wasn't sure he would actually sign on the dotted line. It went all the way to the end and was only in the bag a few days ago, he said. In the summer, the probability was greater that it wouldn't work out than it would work out, but I was still quite relaxed. Haas and Hülkenberg will have a lot to prove next year. Mick has a lot of supporters in the paddock and around the sport due to the achievements of his father. But if Gunther's team are able to make progress up the grid, then they'll prove they made the right choice. Do you think Haas made the right choice? And do you think Latifi should have taken some of the blame for his incident with Mick? Let us know your opinions down below and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.